Groovy Script Test Step Context. This is Lecture 18 of Section 5. Let's begin. In this lecture, we will study what is context, the context object. We will learn about retrieving request and response using Groovy Script. We will learn about the XML holder class. We will learn how to parse a response, how to form XPath for XML, how to get value at XPath, find if a tag exists or not, count the total duplicate nodes or tags with XPath functions, count the total duplicate nodes with XML holder, analyzing the retail application response, check if XPath exists and is a valid one, use regular expressions to validate data, context variable scope, storing properties in context, storing objects in context and all of this followed by quiz in the end. Now let's begin. What is context? It is used to store values that can be used in subsequent test steps or related other scripts. It is a test case run context object which holds context related properties for a test case run session. A common usage scenario which is used for is for looping or keeping track of progress by saving the corresponding counters and collections to the context and also using them to control the flow of the test steps as required. So all of this is achieved by the context object. Retrieving request and response. How is this done? Within a Groovy script assertion, there's a built-in variable message exchange which provides access to an object of a class that implements the message exchange interfaces. So this message exchange interface defines methods for retrieving information related to test requests, including request and response data. Now let's see how and which uh, methods are used to get the data. Now first message is first method is get request content. This method returns the content of the test request. Then we have get request content as XML. So this provides the content of the test as XML. Then we have again the get, resp get response content which gives you the response content. And the get response content as XML which gives you the response content as an XML. So these are the four messages which are used to retrieve request and response data using scripts by using the message exchange variable. XML holder class. Now let's talk about the XML holder class. This class is used for a variety of XML related activities which provides methods to work easily with XML data within scripts. The XML holder class is not included with the SOAP UI score components. Therefore, this line is required to import it from its package. Now this last line of code uh, creates a new XML holder object and assigns it to the variable RESP XML holder. The XML holder constructor takes a string of XML as an argument. In this case, we are using the get response contents as XML, which we just studied is um, the variable message exchange method. We can use this variables uh, method to quickly get our test request response XML as a string. So this uh, get response content as XML returns a string, which is the XML. And we end up with an XML holder object, RESP XML holder that contains and can act upon on our X response XML. Now let's talk about how to parse a response. Now suppose we have this particular response and we have added a properties test step with property response. Now according to get the ID from the response, you can use the following code in which you first create a Groovy Utils object then you get use the get XML holder to get the XML for this response. And then we use the get node value 
to get the first value that can be found with the set x path, which is id. You can see the x path inside as the argument. And this is how we get the id from this particular response. So these are the various steps in which we can parse a given response. Forming x paths for xml. Now suppose if we have response that looks like this. We have various customer tags and each customer tag has the ID name and phone tags. The first customer has ID 111 and the customer 2 has ID 222. Now how do we form x path for this xml? Okay, now this is an x path that uh, is there to see if the node or the tag or that customer exists or not. So we have the exist function and then we use customer and then square brackets name square back brackets we use the function text equals to customer2. We want to see if customer2 exists or not so we use this x path. And then this x path would return the customer2's id. So we have inside the customer node in the square brackets we have text equals to customer2 name and then we have a slash id that means we need to return the id of customer2 so this one the second one would return 222 two, two, because that's the id of customer2 so this is how we form x paths for xml count total duplicate nodes with x path functions in XPath 2.0, it is possible to select with a single XPath expression, which is given in the slide, all the children of a given parent that have at least one other sibling with the same name. Or that means how to find duplicate nodes. We can find the duplicate nodes using this expression. So hence, when this expression or transformation is applied on the provided XML document, the answer comes as 2 because two nodes are present with duplicates. Count total duplicate nodes with XML holder. Now we will use XML holder to do the same thing as we did in the previous slide. First of all, we create a Groovy Utils object and then we use the get XML holder method. And then when we have def holder, the variable holder, we use the same XPath expression as the index of that holder and we find the number of links in paragraph means we find the total number of duplicates the total duplicates in a particular XML string or XML file so these are the three steps that we use to find the total duplicate nodes with XML holder now if you want to check if a particular X path exists and is a valid one then how would we do that now First of all, we create an XPath factory's new instance and then we use that instance to uh, use that instance new XPath function to create a, a particular XPath. And then we use the compile method. This compile method will throw an error, if, uh, will throw an exception if the XPath is incorrect with respect to the syntax and will not throw an error or an exception if the XPath is valid and it exists. This is how we check if an XPath exists or not. We use the compile function. Use regular expressions to validate data. The contains assertion can specify a regular expression for validating the message, which checks for the existence of some text in the received response or request message, as we have studied in the previous videos. The configuration for this is as follows. Now this regular expression that is shown in the image is checking for the string session ID in the entire content of the message that has to be validated. Now note that the bracket question mark s bracket construct is there to specify white space hand line. Context variable scope. When scripting inside some kind of a run, there is always a context variable available for getting or setting context specific variables. The context are submit context, which scope is within one submit of a request. Then we have a test case run con test run context, which is available from within all scripts in a test case run. 
Then we have a load test run context, which is available in load test setup or teardown scripts. And from, ex and from the executed test case context via the load test run to test context, context variable. And then we have the mock run context, which is available in mock service startup and shutdown scripts and mock operation and mock response dispatch scripts. Storing properties in context. We need to store values that can be used in subsequent test steps or related scripts for later use. Now, how do we store properties in context? First of all, we create a property named my property in the context and assign it the string hello. So the property has now a value in it also. This is how we store properties in the context. And then how do we store properties in objects? These are a few lines of code that show that. In order to set property uh, values, we have the method set property value and we can use it as shown. And we can also use object or properties and then index the name of the property and then use dot value to assign a value to it. Then we can get property values by using the get property value method and by indexing the property and by indexing by indexing the property name and by accessing the name directly. So this is how the properties are, properties are stored in objects. Now it's time for a quiz. Question number one. What is XML holder class 2? Question number two. What does the message exchange interface do? Answer number one, the XML holder class is used for a variety of XML related activities. And answer number two is that the message exchange defines methods for retrieving information related to test requests, including request and response data. Question number three, what are the four contexts? Question number four, what method is used to check the validity of an X path? Count, exist, compile, get property. Answer to question number three is that there are four contexts, which are submit context, test run context, load test run context, and mock run context. And answer to question number four is C, compile method. This is the end of the quiz and this is also end of lecture 18. Thank you.